All right, blokes, we are at South East Queensland. We've come to a shed here. Quite a good looking shed, I'd say. Apparently there's a bloke in here by the name of Tony. He's got something a little bit unusual in here. So we'll go and knock on the door and see if he's home. Okay, hello. Are you there, Tony? There's someone home. There you go, mate. There you go. Blokes from sheds. Yeah, mate. Apparently you've got something unique in your shed we can look at. Oh, I've got a few bits and pieces. A few bits and pieces. Can we come in and have a look? Certainly. Okay, let's go and have a look what's in Tony's shed. Okay, you've got a decent bunch of planes in here. It's quite a collection. Um, so tell me a bit about some of your planes. Oh, well, this is a uh, 59 Bonanza. You'll notice down the back it's got a uh, V-tail. It doesn't have a uh, vertical tail fin like most aeroplanes. So it has to, it has to uh, act like an elevator and a rudder. So here's the elevator section working. And now there's the rudder. Okay, well, the, um, I guess the main... Uh, the difference about this aeroplane is you'll, you'll notice that it's only got one control wheel and Beechcraft in their wisdom made it so you could actually put it over there if you wanted to. Okay, well this is a, a J3 Cub. It was um, built in 1944. It was used a lot during the war oh, yes. as, a, as a spotter plane. Yep. It's a very minimal aircraft. This engine is a Continental C75, which means it's 75 horsepower, no starter motor. So you have to hand crank it. I've got to hand crank it, yeah. Okay, Tony, so this looks like a very unique little yeah, plane, this one here. What is this? Yeah, this is, I suppose, is my pride and joy. It's a 1941 Cessna Airmaster. I, I bought it in America after a hangar had collapsed on it. On it? Yeah, a hangar collapsed on the aeroplane and damaged it considerably. Yes. And uh, I had it rebuilt. When the hangar collapsed, uh, uh, an RSJ fell across the leading edge of the wing and completely guillotined all the nose ribs off and then bounced across the front and damaged the, the fuselage at the front. And another one bounced down the back of the fuse and broke the rudder. I'll just open the door and let's look inside. Okay. Okay, the, the instrument panel is uh, very original. When it left the uh, Cessna factory, the only option that was available was a cigar lighter. You can see the, uh, the, the, the way the ribs are made. They're a little truss made out of uh, spruce, all wood. And you can see the lacing, the rib lacing that holds the fabric on the, on the ribs. I'll just retract the flaps and you can not see the mechanism. It's a very complicated setup in there. Wow. <laughs> Tony, this is a unique looking plane. This one here, it's um, something... Yeah, this is my little Globe Swift. A Globe Swift? Yeah, yeah. So it, was, it was made in 1946. And they only made them in one year. When they couldn't make enough of them. People coming back from the war, pilots flying Mustangs, they wanted... This is aerobatic, yep. retractable undercarriage. Yep. They couldn't, couldn't make enough of them. And they were entitled to something like five million US dollars reconstruction finance to help them get back into civilian production because of their war work. Some very smart accountants found out about it and tried to take over the company. The guy that owned the company, who was independently wealthy and a good mate of the president, rang up the, mate, the president and said, you can keep your money, and liquidated the company to stop it being taken over. OK, you've got a couple of uh, motorbikes in this shed too, I see. Yeah, we have. Um, these ones here are our uh, modern bikes. They're my wife's and, and uh, son's bikes. Uh, yeah, they're not the interesting ones. So where's the interesting they're ones? They're around over here. Well, let's go over there and have a look at the interesting <laughs> ones then. Okay, what are, what are these bikes here, Tony? Um, these are all pre-1973 or thereabouts. They're all old bikes that I used to look at and drool over when I was first riding and could never afford. <laughs> the, the CB uh, 750, that's a K1, that's a 69 or 70, I can't remember now. That was the death knell of the British bikes. Okay, this is a, a Vincent Black Shadow 53 model. Ready? <laughs> Got to psych myself up a bit. Yeah. Okay, you've got uh, some other bikes over here. Yeah, th these are some that I'm still working on. This is a 1910 Triumph. <laughs> this is just a fun thing. It's a Mal Malvin Star autobike. 1948. 
Um, what do we got here? This is a 1927 Triumph 500. This one's a 1923 Harley Davidson V-twin. 998, it's a Model F. A Huga horn. <laughs> no front brakes. No front brakes. The yellow one's a, uh, a Noriel. It's, a, it's a, a Mark II square four engine in a Norton featherbed frame. Uh, this is a Triumph 350, a Tiger 90. Next along is a G80 CS Matchless. Okay, Tango, thanks very much for a look around your shed. That was a really great day. I, we really enjoyed it. Thanks very much. I just found something interesting. We sure did. Thank you. <laughs>